Renault's start to 2019 compared to what they wanted it to be has been very underwhelming as they have rarely featured at the front end of the midfield where they really should be. And it also doesn't seem as though their season is getting any better. So in today's video, I'm going to analyse Renault's poor start to 2019 and why they are underperforming compared to where they want to be. And also look at why they are off the pace. So to find out why Renault have not been that good in 2019, make sure to check out this video. Right, so with Renault, let's start off from pre-season testing. Now, testing actually went pretty well. They didn't have any massive issues. They did have Daniel Ricciardo's rear wing fall off at one point. But except for that, it was a pretty normal pre-season testing program for Renault. They didn't have that many reliability issues. And testing seemed as though to go well for the Renault team and looked like they were going to be good going into the Australian Grand Prix. But once they got to the Australian Grand Prix in Melbourne, it was pretty clear to see that the Renault car, in terms of speed, was not that good. As they ended up P11 and P12 only in qualifying, and that, compared to where they should be, was just not good enough. They should have been, really, the start off the season, near enough at the front of the midfield. Now... When it came to race pace, they did have the pace to get into the points quite comfortably, even though Daniel Ricciardo did very stupidly crash out on the first, uh, the first corner almost at the Australian Grand Prix and did retire later on. Nico Hülkenberg did uh, get some solid points for the team, but you could definitely see that this team was not quite on pace with where they should be. Then we came to Bahrain where their qualifying performance got even worse as they qualified, I believe, in P11 and P17. Now, the race was definitely better for them. And I think in terms of race pace, they did have the best car in the midfield. But then they had something that has been their Achilles heel for so, so long. And that is reliability as both cars whilst in P6 and P10, retired from the race at the same time with the same kind of issue. It was a disaster for the team, and they blew a lot of points that might be vital in the Constructors' Championship fight later on. They did, though, recover very well uh, for the next Grand Prix in Shanghai, where they qualify 7th and 8th, and that was their best performance of the season so far, without a doubt. And even then, the Grand Prix... Nico Hülkenberg did have reliability issues and retired. Daniel Ricciardo finished in P7. And it seemed as though finally Renault were getting to know their car and had fully unlocked the potential their car did have. And they were now performing how they should be in the midfield. But then came Baku where they struggled so, so much, especially with the tyres, had a terrible qualifying in Baku, their worst qualifying of the season so far, and their race was not that much better as Daniel Ricciardo retired after a stupid crash with Danny Kvyat, and Nico Hülkenberg finished outside the points and had no pace in that Renault car. And after Baku, things were not looking good, and they got even worse at the Spanish Grand Prix of 2019 that happened just a week ago, where... At a track where you'd think they'd be good and at a track where normally the big teams especially bring plenty of new parts to their car. And Renault did, by the way. You would think that Renault would make a step forward, but they didn't. And they had quite a poor weekend compared to what they should be performing like at such a track. And these stats right here for me prove that Renault's 2019 so far, definitely compared to 2018, has been absolutely terrible. So after five races in 2018, Renault had 41 points on the board. But after five races in 2019, they only have 12 points. That's almost 30 points less in the same amount of time from one season to another that is absolutely terrible for this team but another thing that's terrible is that Renault so far in 2019 are averaging one DNF 
per Grand Prix. That's right, they've had five DNFs in 2019. And I have to say, for a works Formula 1 team, that is pathetic. And it is quite clear to see Renault do have big issues and they are going to have a long season where they're going to have to improve their car if they do have a good and realistic chance of reclaiming P4 in the constructors. But who is to blame for Renault being in the position that they are in right now? Let's start off at the very top at the team principal position and Cyril a beatball now. Cyril doesn't have the best reputation of Formula 1 because he makes a lot of, say, false promises and a lot of promises he makes are not to be trusted because they don't tend to come off, such as the Renault car being very good or the power unit finally producing the type of power that it needs to to really compete. Cyril has done this plenty of times and has also done it with the 2019 car. But as it is clear to see, the 2019 car just isn't good enough. Now the only area I can fault Cyril in is that I don't think he is leading the team in the way that they need to be led if they are going to improve and become a proper big team and compete with Ferrari, Red Bull and even Mercedes. And Cyril doesn't exactly have the best track record in F1. He hasn't exactly been successful really in his career within Formula 1 and that is not good. And I just believe the years of false promises coming from Cyril in regards to Renault when it comes to the team or the power unit, I feel as though they're starting now to catch up and I think he really could bite the bullet when it comes to his position in this team. Now I'm not going to say right now that Cyril should be sacked, but if Renault don't finish P4 on the Constructors, by the end of 2019, I think he should be. But right now, I'm not going to say that because even though they are P8 in the Constructors, in terms of points, they are not that far behind. And I think Renault can definitely still improve. And hopefully for Cyril, in terms of keeping his job, they do improve. Now with the drivers of Renault, Daniel Ricciardo and Nico Hülkenberg, I can't really fault them because... I think this season, they have done the best they could have done with such a car. I can't really fault them for any particular races. I mean, yeah, Daniel Ricciardo, his home Grand Prix wasn't that great, but that was only the first Grand Prix of 2019. After that, I think the drivers have done the best they could have. I really think you can't blame these drivers. They just haven't been given the machinery that I think they deserve for the talent and speed they do have. And hopefully, especially for Daniel Ricciardo's sake, the Renault car improves, so his move to Renault seems to be a bit smarter than it is right now. But when it comes to the reason the Renault car is not as quick as it should be, for me that comes down to two people. First off, the technical director of the chassis, Nick Chester. Now, I don't think he's done a massively bad job. I don't think Renault in one certain area are very poor. I think they are struggling with the tyres. But I think generally they just haven't got the new 2019 regulations quite right. And I think front to rear, they just don't have quite enough downforce to be properly successful in the midfield right now. And I think, again, they just haven't quite got to terms with the type of car you need to be successful in 2019. And let's be honest, with technical directors, these things can happen. Adrian Newey, for example, hasn't designed a great car every single season. He has been a technical director. These things do happen. But I think you have to say Nick Chester has probably got it wrong so far on this Renault car. But another area, of course, where Renault are not doing so well is the power unit. Now, when I was researching for this video, I came across something that is actually very interesting to me. And that is that Remy Tafan, who has been the director or the leader of the power unit side of the Renault team or the Renault operation in Formula 1 since 2014, he has held this position since the V6 hybrid rules came out in 2014. Now, as you guys know, Renault 
ever since 2014 have not had a powerful enough engine and how this guy has still remained in that position i don't understand because he really has been one of the only permanents at renault and has been one of the main causes in why renault are not when it comes to power unit or team as competitive as they should be how this guy still has a job i don't know and he should definitely be removed from this role because he has been a permanent in that role and has really led Renault down the wrong path in terms of designing the power unit and getting the best power output that they can from the Renault engine. So for me, Remy Tafan has to go and how he has held that position for so long, I do not understand. But the areas of the car that is really not performing right now is again, generally just the downforce of the car, but also the tyres, they're not getting the tyres working in the way they want it to. And well, we have seen this across really most of the teams in 2019 having issues with the tyres. Renault are not alone when it comes to that. But considering the type of people they have at that team, I think they should be getting on top of such an issue a bit quicker than other teams. And again, they do have the money and resources to bring enough developments to try and solve this issue. And they really should be by their home Grand Prix and Paul Ricard, which is in about a month's time, they should be having a fix for that issue. Because if they don't, then they really are going to have a terrible season. But when it comes to their car aerodynamically, because front to rear, it's not really good enough. All they can really do is just bring new parts to the car and progressively make it better and bring it up to the type of level that it needs to be at because right now it's not at a good enough level for them to be successful enough from that midfield pack but that's not exactly easy for this team because some parts they have brought to this car have worked but some have not and looking at the competition Renault have in the midfield and looking at the type of car they have right now Honestly, I think they are in for a tough season and I think if they do get P4, it's going to take a monumental effort to get that. Because the base of their car right now, until the end of the season, I just don't think is going to be quite good enough when it matters. But of course, the big people at Renault back in France are going to want a quick fix and are going to want this team to really start performing in this project for Renault to really be a big team by 2021. And if this season does turn out to be the disaster I think it will be, you can expect heads to roll at Renault and plenty of them. And Cyril is definitely number one when it comes to that. So for 2019, if Renault are going to have what is viewed as a successful season, they have plenty of work to do. And what you have to say is a critical season in their development going forward. Because failure this season could be a failure of the project. But guys, that has been it for this video. Make sure to comment down below. Do you think Renault have been as poor as I think so far in 2019? And how do you think this team can improve? Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button for more content like this. And until next time, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.